Hi, this is Doug Kay, and I've put together this short video to demonstrate the actions that I've created for managing the quarter tones and three quarter tones in your images. The easiest place to find the link to download these free actions is on the YouTube page where this video lives. I'm not going to explain how to install the actions. You can do that by looking up any online tutorial on how to install Photoshop actions and do what's right for your particular installation. The image I'm going to use to demonstrate these actions is this shot I took at the University of Havana in Cuba. It's particularly good for demonstrating what quarter tones and three quarter tones are all about and for how these actions actually work. To give you an idea of what we're talking about, if you're not familiar with the terms, take a look at this part of the image. Uh, this is in the lighter part of the image. This is an area that we'd refer to as the quarter tone portion of the image. That is, it's not the very brightest part of the image, but it's generally quite light. Uh, you can see that although it ranges from light to very light, there's not much contrast here. There's not much detail, and that's what we're going to try and fix with these actions. Similarly, look down here in the darker part of the image, and you'll see that we have everything from very dark to fairly dark here in the granite. This is the three-quarter tone portion of the image. This is, again, where we want to bring out more contrast and detail. So let's go to our Actions panel, open that up, and here are Doug's actions. Let's select the one-quarter tone curve action, and at the bottom of the Actions panel, click on the Play button. That will run that action which generates the channel as well as the Curves Adjustment layer. Get that out of the way. Now, let's take a look at what this mask actually includes. First, take a look at this part of the image again that we looked at here earlier. And note that there's some very light areas in here, there's some fairly light areas in here, and then we have even some dark areas right under that ridge. So let's take a look at what's in that channel. Note that that line under the ridge is dark. It's dark because that area is outside of the quarter tone area. It's too dark. This area here is light. That means that it is within the quarter tone range. But look at this area here. This area is also dark. In the image itself, let me take a look here and show you what that does, what it looks like. In the image, that's very bright. It's so bright that it's outside the quarter tone area, and therefore, in our mask, it is black. This area is black, as well as this shadow under this ridge is black. What's light in the mask is the quarter tone area. That, that's the area that is one quarter of the way from white to black. Again, let's take a look at that mask so you can see that. Here's an area, again, that is very light in the original image. Here's an area that is very dark in the original image. And because this area here is in the quarter tones, it's light in our mask. All right, let's get that mask out of the way. Let's actually go to our curves adjustment now. And you'll see in the histogram for the curves adjustment that the pixels that are selected by that mask are in the quarter tone range. We have a grid over the histogram that divides it into quarters. And as you can see, this area falls generally in that area, in that area that's one quarter of the way from the lightest to the darkest part of the image. So let's put two little points on this curve at the two sides of the quarter tones within the image. And let's steepen those by quite a bit. Let's bring that one down. Let's bring that one up. Not quite so much there. Mostly bring this one down because we don't want to blow out things. Notice that we've gone above the original diagonal line here, and that's going to cause things to blow out more than we want. In the case of the quarter tones, we really never want to go above that diagonal line. But we can become quite severe down here. Let's not worry about the darker part of the image for now. We're going to come back later and fix that. So let's turn this adjustment layer off. And you see here's the original. Again, look at the, the lighter part of the image at the upper one-third area. Let's turn it back on. And you can see, if you look around a bit, that we've increased the contrast, again, on, and the original off, and back to on again. We've increased the contrast and therefore the deal, uh, detail in those quarter tone areas. And we can play with this a bit more and do quite a bit to really bring out as much as we want here. This is non-destructive, so we can come back any time and change this. All right. Now let's do the same thing in the three-quarter tones. Let's go to our actions. Let's run the three-quarter three -quarter tone curve. 
That creates another curves adjustment layer. And let's look at the mask for that one. Well, that's interesting. That's actually looks like a negative, which is what it is. Again, what is light in this mask are the areas that are in the three quarter tone area. Portions of the image that are darker than three quarters tones or lighter than three quarters tones will end up dark in this mask. No surprise, almost everything at the upper part of the image is dark because those areas are too light. But we've also got areas that are dark because they're actually too dark. Down here you can look uh, at this puddle and the granite. You'll see there are some areas that are dark and some areas that are light. So again, let's turn that off. Let's go in directly into the curves adjustment layer, get it out of the way a bit. Uh, let's put a couple of points uh, surrounding that. Uh, again, in this case, we, we don't want to let the thing dip too far in the wrong direction, but we want, do want to steam bend it. We're going to go a little dark to really get some richer blacks here, I think. And we will really beef up some of the contrast in those areas. We don't want to go too much up here because we're starting to influence some of the other areas. Again, what we can do is get rid of that for a moment. Turning that off. You can see, again, look at the lower third where most of those um, three-quarter tones lives, live, and then turn it back on. Let's look at the combined effect. Here's the original image with no adjustments whatsoever. And if we turn them both on, we can see that we've substantially increased both the contrast and the detail in both the quarter tones and three-quarter tones. Again, here's the original. And if we turn them both back on, there is the uh, both of the curves applied. And you can study the image and you can see some of the details. Um, for example, down here in this area, you can see that there's some interest going on. Go back to the original, you can see we've lost some of that. Now we're working in RGB mode, which means that as we increase the uh, contrast, we're also increasing the saturation. You can solve that a number of ways. Uh, one thing that I might do from time to time is select these two curves layers and change the blend mode from normal down to luminosity. In doing so, we're saying that these curves only adjust the luminosity of the image, not the color in any way. They don't adjust the hue or the saturation. Again, if we take a look at that, we'll see that the effect is quite a bit uh, less dramatic. There it is off, and there the changes are on. So it's more subtle, but we've only affected the luminosity of the image, not the saturation in any way. Now, there may be times when you want to do something other than use a curves layer. So to do that, we're going to get rid of those layers there. Uh, we're going to go back to our actions panel. And you see we have the simpler actions here that will just create the channels. Uh, we can create the uh, three-quarter tone channel there by clicking on that, running that action. And then if we go into the channels panel, we can see there is our three-quarter tones channel which we can use as a mask. We can do a variety of things with that. But if you want to just get to the channels and not actually create the curves adjustment layers, that's how you do it. These actions are based on something called luminosity masking, which I learned primarily from Tony Kuiper and Sean Bagshaw. Luminosity masking is a terrific technology and a set of tools for manipulating the luminosity of your image. Uh, I encourage you to go and look at some of the original documentation and actions and tools and videos created by Tony and Sean. Uh, the best place is to go to the link that you see here on the screen. It's also on the YouTube page, so you can find it from there. But if you're intrigued with this idea of luminosity masking, uh, accessing the different tonal ranges of your image, then definitely follow up by going to the, the source, if you will, which is the Tony Kuiper materials. If you're not curious about how all this works, you can stop right here. But for those who want to understand what's going on behind the scenes, I've created this simple black to white gradient. And I'm going to run the actions on this gradient. For example, let's go into actions here, run my quarter tone channel uh, action. And if we look at the channels panel, we'll see it's created this quarter tones channel. Let's take a look at what's in there. Hmm, interesting, huh? What we have here is a channel, which could be used as a mask or for other purposes, that is lightest in the one quarter tone area and goes to black as farther we get from that one quarter tone value. So parts of the image that are very light are black and parts of the image that are mid-tone to dark are also towards the black. We can also use this channel to create a selection. Let's go into our channels panel 
and reset that and let's use this as a selection. Now what you'll notice here is that the marching ants are indicating the selected area. This is again selections are not not all or nothing. In this case what the marching ants are showing us are the pixels that are more than 50% selected. In this case, more than 50% white, more than 50% gray, I should say. And this gives you an idea of the part of your image, again, defined by tonal values, not by geography, that will be selected using this action. Let's get rid of that. Uh, let's go back to this and let's run the same thing with our three quarter tones. We go to our actions, three quarter tone channel, run that. Back to our channels panel. Let's take a look at the three quarter tone. Again, what are we looking at here? We're seeing a mask or a channel that is lightest in the area that's closest to the three quarter tonal values. If parts of the image are particularly dark, they're excluded. That's the, the left side of the mask. And as we move to the mid tones and the lights, those are also excluded from this channel. Uh, we go here again and let us use the three quarter tones channel as a selection. And what you see once again is that the selected area is that which is in the three quarter tonal value portion of the image. So that's what's going on here. We're actually creating channels based on the tonal values and we're doing that through a process of selections and combining selections and adjusting levels. If you really care, you could go ahead and reverse engineer the scripts there, the actions, and see what they are. But this is the concept. Now, one of the beautiful things about luminosity masks is that it allows you to make adjustments to portions of your image based on the tonality, not based on some physical feature. You don't have to worry about what's next to something else. You don't have to worry about refining edges because these masks are essentially self-feathering. You're actually selecting pixel by pixel based on tonal values. So unless you are too aggressive, you won't have any halos, you won't have any strange edges. This is a terrific way to perform actions upon your images based purely on the tonal values. I hope you find them useful. Uh, I encourage you to leave comments on my blog. You'll also find uh, a link to this blog post on the YouTube video page. And in particular, I hope you'll check back because this is a fairly early version of these actions. Uh, I still have work to do on them. I think they're a little rough around the edges. I find them useful, uh, but I already am thinking about ways I can make them more useful or more accurate for a larger range of images than they might be today. I also encourage you to go into your own images and look for images and identify what's in the quarter tones, what's in the three quarter tones, and where you have the opportunity to really enhance the richness of those images by improving the contrast and detail in the quarter tone and three quarter tone areas. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.